On March 15, 1536, Suleiman and Ibrim Pasha dined together, as was their custom. In the morning, Ibrim's body was found strangled. But Suleiman's desolation and loss had only begun. A few years after Ibrahim's death, Hurem claimed to have uncovered a plot to overthrow Suleiman, devised with Safavid help by his beloved firstborn son and heir, Mustafa. This is a continuous problem in Ottoman history, sons trying to eventually replace their father. This happens in monar monarchies. Succession could become uh, a problem, and it was an acute problem, and Suleiman had his share of it, and perhaps did not always play his hands right. Without hesitation, Suleiman ordered Mustafa's execution, then sat by the young man's body for days, refusing to allow anyone to touch him. The best hope for the empire's future was dead. When Hurem herself died the following year, Suleiman fell deeper into despair, finding solace in his poetry. Most of the poetry, I think, was written after he lost his wife since he talks about the loneliness of being in office, that he has nobody left anymore, and he's dying to uh, join her. Even if your reign on the imperial throne seems everlasting, don't be taken in. One day a hostile wind will blow and bring to your land of beauty heaven's misfortune and deepest suffering. In all his loneliness, there was only one refuge for the Sultan whose power, like his sorrow, seemed limitless. He returned to the field of battle, to the work of conquest. He personally led 13 campaigns. The last one was uh, at Zigetvar, uh, which is in Hungary now. I think he knew that this was going to be his last campaign. He personally led it, knowing that he would not come back alive. In 1561, the man who had ruled the empire longer than any other died in his grand war pavilion, surrounded by his generals. He was 67. No Ottoman sultan would ever achieve his greatness again the nexus of world power would move from the Mediterranean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean and the New World, slowly leaving the Ottomans behind. In Istanbul today, the Sufi dervishes still turn with the same prayerful pirouettes they danced in Suleiman's day. It is a meditation in motion whose mystic origins go back even further to the time of the Prophet Muhammad. You have become the best community ever raised up in mankind, the Quran assures all believers enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong and having faith in God. Islamic and Western civilization have the same roots. They're dawning in the Fertile Crescent. The monotheism of the Jews and Christians. The classical intellectual culture of the ancient Greeks. The two traditions are kindred spirits, alike, yet very different. Islam's legacy is intertwined with the West's, and to the billions of Muslims who make it the second largest religion in the world, 
It is a living legacy. An elemental part of the great human venture that is world civilization. Islam Empire of Faith continues at PBS Online. Click through our interactive timeline to learn more about the history and culture of Islam or take a virtual tour of the Dome of the Rock and other extraordinary sites. It's all online at pbs.org or America Online, keyword PBS.